Okay, Tov. Today's staff is staff Pei Vav in Nidor. We're discussing the issue yesterday. We're in, we're in the middle of the discussion about Shmuel. Shmuel said the Lach like the Yoch Menuri in our Mishnah that <clears throat> if a wife makes a netter that forbidding her husband to have any anna from her, and obviously there are things that he she's required to do for him in the house. It's very hard to live them together. So the Tanakhama had said he doesn't even have to break that netter. It's not chal because she's obligated. She's meshuba to him. They keep it said she should, he should break it because maybe she'll do more work than necessary. And she's only obligated for certain things, not for other things. And therefore, the netter could be foul. He should break it. The other man says, no, I agree that um, she's obligated to give him all that stuff. But maybe he'll divorce her later on. And then when she's no longer obligated to do services for him, if he wants to take her back, he won't be able to because the netter will be foul. So the Gemara said, Shmuel Pasma could be Menuri. That he has to make that maybe he'll divorce her. The Gemara says, What do you mean? It's double shlobalola. She's not divorced now. If it's not chal now, if the net is not chal now, how could it be chal later on? It doesn't make any sense. If net is not chal now because she's married, how could it be chal later on? Oh, you'll tell me maybe he holds that you could be, you could uh, sanctify or uh, prohibit something in the future, double shlobalola. But we see that he holds like uh, Shmuel Passes, like a Bjochman a Sandler, that when a man says, I maktish the uh, produce of my wife's uh, toil. I'm very, uh, Rameir says, yeah, you could, um, you know, the minimal stuff that she's uh, obligated to, it doesn't mean anything, can't be maktish that. But the extra part that he is entitled to, um, he could be maktish because Rameir holds double shavol, you could maktish double shavol. Whereas Rabbi Yechon says, no, it's chulin because you can't be mocked. It's not here right now. The stuff isn't here. You can't be mocked for something in the future that's not uh, that's not here. So there we saw the machlokas. The Tanakhama said, um, the Tan- yeah, the Tanakhama, the, 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 uh, the Ron was on Ahmed Bey's that, um, uh, that ha- and even Rameir says he mocked of her shalom. Doesn't mean, he, even there he says, the Ron explained, Rameir says, you're Maktish, not while he's, not when she's alive, but after he inherits her, the stuff that, in the future. I'm not talking about the stuff that's right now. He says, we're talking about whether she's Mechuyif to give him or not Mechuyif to give him while they're married, but we're not talking about that. Ron says, when Rameir says, he'd be Maktish, the extra part of the stuff after she's dead, after that's the Dabr Shlobo So if she's not dead, right, the Amr Maktish, La Mechaim Kamer, Says the man in the first of the widest lines on a mid base of yesterday's staff. The less be, the less lay be midi. Ella, the less we're not talking about when he's alive. He's not entitled to anything here. Ella hektish la acher misa kamar shabal zochah bahum v'amosah. Even we're talking about a case where she doesn't have to supply him with stuff, but he he, he whatever she produced while she's alive, he's entitled to put on. So you'll see kimakish davar shlobololim. So you'll make davar shlobololim. And Shmuel doesn't hold like that. So if Shmuel doesn't hold the Olam, how can he say over here in our case, in our Mishnah, that when a woman prohibits every all her uh, assets, that prohibits the husband from having an off from her assets, and the Tanakhama says, yeah, you can't do that while they're married. He says, well, you could do it because maybe you'll divorce her later on. How is that going to be? Divorce later on is a double Shalom It's not here right now. And if it's not how right now, because he's married to her and she has to supply him with those things, how can it be how later on? That was what the Gemara dealt with. So the Gemara said, went back and forth, said, well, maybe Kogmas are different because since I could prohibit somebody else's stuff on me, therefore I should, it should be Chal there too. But that I could produce somebody else's stuff on, I could, I could prohibit somebody else's stuff on me or me on somebody else because at least I, if I'm prohibiting on myself, I'm here. I have, I'm under my own authority. Or if I prohibit my stuff on somebody else, the assets are in my authority. But how can I produce something? How can I prohibit something which is not here, not under my wishes right now, belongs to the wife for later on? On some, in, in other words, how could she she prohibit something which is not here right now? The assets aren't here right now. The double she can't. She how could she ask her something which is not here right now? The assets that she's going to produce later on after their divorce, meaning after divorce on. On her husband, which is not here right now. In other words, getting divorced is the davar shlobalolam in our Mishnah, and uh, she's she's prohibiting on somebody else. So you don't see, just like I can't I can't prohibit you from having an off from your stuff. I can't produce. I can't prohibit uh, uh, assets uh, uh, that are going to be later on after the divorce on 
her husband. Uh, that's the Dabr Shlobo Lola. So Elias Dabr Shlobo Lola, meaning assets after the divorce on her husband, uh, which is uh, on somebody else. You don't see you could do that. So the Gemara tries to compare it to a case of um, where he says, um, well, you know, if you say she's mocked to her hands, still they're mishibu to the husband right now. So again, it's a Dabr Shlobo Lola. Uh, the fact that the divorce later on, that's double shalom. So the Morris says, how do you know that helps? Maybe, um, you know, maybe it's like a case where a man says to his friend, listen, um, this field that I'm going to sell you right now, after I buy back, you know, I can sanctify it. So here too, uh, after she gets divorced, maybe she can prohibit it on him. Like Morris said, this is on tape up. And yesterday's stuff that we said yesterday, three lines from the top of the page, how can you compare it to that? It's now in my Rishus. This field that I'm about to sell to you, when I buy it back from you, I'm making it, I'm sanctifying it, I'm making it holy. Uh, so there, that could work. That could work. Uh, because why? Because it's, it's, it's mine right now. Right now I could be makdish it. But a woman can't be makdish the work of her hands for later on because it's meshuvah to the husband. It, it, her, 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 what, her, the produce of her, of her hands, the product of her, of her work, is uh, obligated to her husband. So the more than one say, "Holodomi ella omela chaveiro." This is comparable to somebody says, "Sarzushimachartilcha." The field that I sold you already. Reuben says to Shimon, "The field that I sold you already." When I buy it back from you, I'm making it holy. Nikotchin, does that work? It's not in his hands right now. Can't be mocked to it. This is what we we're up to yesterday. About seven, eight lines down on the page. Masculor a papa me dummy, how could you compare that to Gabi's Vina when it's sold? Seek the Messiah. It's an absolute sale. Meaning, if Reuben sold the field to Shimon, and now he tells Shimon after he sold it, Shimon, when I buy it back from you, it should be holy. It's not holy from right now. I want to make it holy from when I buy it back to you right now. There he can't do it because it's already sold. It's not in his authority to do right now. Gabi Isha me psycho does but by a woman, is it a de- absolute that it's not hers? It is hers right now. She's just obligated. What she produces is hers, but she's obligated to give it to her husband. It's not like a case of a sale where there's no relationship anymore between me. I'm trying to be mocked to shit and the field that I sold to you. But if there's a deal like that, where he said, after I uh, sell to you and I buy it back, I'm not with it. What? That could work. That could work. That could, that could be. Because, I could, because since I'm empowered to be mocked to shit today, I could say that it's kadosh after I sold it to you, after I buy it back from you. And this is not a Befei Shemish, like the Ron said, this is simply a Svar. It makes sense to say, since I have the power to be Maktashit today, I could be Maktashit for when I buy it back from you. I could do that. Okay, now, again, the Ron goes on to say, this is really a Kedushas, uh, Kedushas Donan. It's like, you better buy it. It's not really Kedushas Aguf, because if it's the Kedushas Aguf, uh, that would, that could, to, you know, if, if he's obligated to somebody, well, not in the case of sale, but let's wait, 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 let's wait till we see the next case. But you see the difference. The difference is, is if it's in my rishus right now, I could be mocked the shit. So therefore I can mock the shit. That I can match the field that I'm about to sell to you when I buy it back from you. That he could do. But if it's already sold, it's yours. How can I be mocked you back? How can you compare the woman? I'm trying to say, how can the woman uh, be uh, mocked or 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 uh, prohibit her husband from using assets when, <laughs> after their divorce. After the divorce, it's like a double shalom And uh, you want to compare it to the case of, of a sale, but in a sale, it's a final sale, meaning I sold it to Shimon, it's his right now. How can I be mocked to Shimon? He told me, husband, he's mean of seeking the sale. It's an absolute thing, meaning the field is in Shimon's rishos. And how can I be mocked to Shimon? I've got to mock to something which is in his rishos. Gabi Isha, me psika bilsa, but by a woman, it's not as absolute. By a woman, it's more because it's her assets, except they're obligated to her husband. This is more similar to a case where a man tells the next guy, Ruben tells Shimon, oh, my field, which is mortgage to you, whose field is it? When you have a mortgage on something, you have a house. It's yours, right? It belongs to you, except it's mortgage to the bank, which means they can take it, but right now it's yours. It's the asset is your asset, right? If you have to pay capital gains or capital losses, it's based, in fact, it's yours. It does belong to the bank. We act as if it belongs to the bank, right? But the truth is it's yours. So here also, this field, which I have mortgaged to you for a loan or whatever, when I'm coded from you, in other words, when I pay back the loan and I get my field back to you, that would work. 
Milo Kacha, that's, that's what he wants to, that's similar to the case of the woman, just like a man. Reuben tells Shimon, listen, you know my field that, that's mortgaged to you? When I, when I redeem it back, meaning when it's mortgaged to you, why? Because you've lent me money. When I pay back the mo money, I'll we'll release, you'll release the mortgage, right? We'll tear up the mortgage. But when I buy, when I, when I, when I uh, release it from you, when I get rid of the mortgage, I'm being mocked to shit. Uh, why? Because it is mine right now. The same thing with the woman. The woman says, listen, right now, I'm, I'm for, I prohibit all my assets uh, from my husband. She can't do it right now because he's, she's obligated to him. She has married him. But when she's divorced later on, then it would be effective. Maybe that's like that too. Maslow Shisha Bredavidi, that's also not good. We're, we're now six lines from the bottom of the page of the Gemara. Maslow Shisha Bredavidi, me, Dame Hapidi Kaper, Sada, Biata Liftoso. In the field, I could always redeem it. How do I redeem it? I pay back the loan, right? Ruben says to Shimon, my field is, is a mortgage to you, right? When I release the mortgage by paying you back the loan, whenever I do that, it's not like those loans that, you know, you can't cancel a million. You could pay it back whenever you want, you get rid of the mortgage. When I, when I get rid of the mortgage, I want it to be kadosh. So it could be kadosh. I have the ability to do that even for right now. Isha, Biyadol, is garish, but a woman, is it in her hands to divorce? She, even though the stuff is her surrounding, she says, when I get divorced, you know, be half for later on. When go. She's, it's not in, she, she doesn't have the ability to get divorced when she wants to. Divorce depends on the husband, as we've seen, right? Isha, Biyadol, is garish. Hello, Tommy, this is more comfortable. This is, our case is more similar to this case. The field that I've mortgaged you for 10 years, I can't break it in the middle. Not like I could pay you back anytime and break up the mortgage. I mortgage my field to you for 10 years. That's the deal. You could you can use the field for 10 years, then it comes back to me. The chef, then when I'm quoted from you after 10 years, wouldn't that work? Because it is a field. So that should work. Maskar Ravashi, again, the bottom of the page. Maskar Ravashi, me, dummy, again, how you compare. Awesome kids there, it's a fixed time. After 10 years, I can put it. In other words, my field is mortgaged to you for 10 years. And I say, you know what? When I get it back after 10 years, I want it to be kadosh. That could work. Why? Because since it's really my field. But by a woman, can she say, Isha mi isla kitusa? Can a woman say, in 10 years when I'll be divorced, um, I'm, I'm prohibiting it from you, from my husband. She can't do that. Maybe she'll never get divorced. Maybe he'll die. Maybe she'll die. Maybe they'll live happily ever after and they'll never get divorced. She said that, but she says that, yeah. yeah. But in fact, we're, she's not really saying it anyway. What's happening on our mission is she's prohibiting, she's, well, you're right. Maybe as soon as she says, you can't have any, enough from any of my assets, she doesn't have to mention divorce. That could begin. That could be the beginning of the divorce proceedings, anyway, right? But that's really what she said. She said, "My husband." Remember, she says, "My father-in-law, my brother-in-law, all those people." The netters chal. It's not ben alubay. No, it's not even nefesh. But if she says, "You, my husband, can I have any assets? You're prohibited from my, my, my assets." Well, right now he, she can't prohibit her. Like the Tanakhama says, you don't even have to break it. And Rabbi Kiva says you have to break it in case she produces a lot more that he, she's not obligated to give him. Rabbi Manuri says. No, that he holds like the Tanakama that she's obligated to give him that stuff. But maybe they'll get divorced. And if they get divorced, then the assets would be prohibited on the husband. Therefore, he has to break it. So the question is, so he says he breaks it right now. Does that work for later on? If it's not, he can't break it now. How can he break it later on? That was the question we dealt with. Unless you say, it's not here right now. But Shmuel doesn't hold the Makhtar Shavu Shalom. How can he possibly give off the minority? That's the question that we're going back and forth with. What's this case? This case of the woman. The woman, she's producing something. It's hers, but she's obligated to give it to her husband, right? As soon as she makes it, it belongs to the husband. So again, how could she be makdish that or prohibit him from using it later on after their divorce if she can't do it right now? Ella. You know what? Yeah, if they get divorced or she dies. Okay, uh, you know, uh, uh, if they get divorced, she di uh, dies, it belongs to the husband. He inherits her. So Even her mayor is talking. Huh? Oh, she, right, she, yeah. she uh, well, it's not hers really to give away. All the assets during her lifetime belong <laughs> or obligated to her husband. What is she saying? That, uh, well, before I die, I want my assets to go to Jim over there. What are you talking about? They're obligated to her husband as long as they're married. If she dies, if she predeceases the husband, 
So then he inherits her. A man can give away his assets before he dies, right? That's what, why, that's why we write wills today. So you don't have to you don't have to come on to the halacha of the Torah that everything belongs to the boys and if there's a bahor he gets a double share and eventually you will cause a fight in the family that will never be rectified during their lifetime. <laughs> that's unfortunately what the halachas of the Torah do if you if you follow that. But the Torah allows for giving away your assets before you die. You don't have to go by the halachas of the Torah. Some say you well, want to do it, so you should give the boys like the. Uh, lawyer that I used, uh, Dan uh, Frimmer, though Frimmer, the uh, professor at Tom Chacham, he says, give your svarim to your boys. You know, nobody wants your old svarim anymore. They got new ones, but okay, give the svarim to the boys. But otherwise, anyone, I'd say this to everybody, if you don't divide up your assets equally among all your children, you're making a big, big mistake. A man who's no longer the neighbor, secretary, he came to me, he had six children. Five were married, one was ne- one, the daughter never got married. The man in the neighborhood here, came to me, I don't know why he came to me, but he asked me, he says, well, you know, he doesn't want to give uh, her as much as the other ones because they have, they got married. And I said, I said, you're crazy. You're, you're yes. just causing a fight. Yeah. You take your assets, you give everything, divide it up equally among all the children. Also, you are guaranteeing that they will not be talking to each other for a long period of time. It's not your business what the kid, they do with their lives, you know, afterwards. It's nice to have nachas, but... Uh, not your business. You have to divide up everything equally. Anyway, that's my advice. But going back to our issue over here, how could she prohibit something for later on that she can't do right now? She can't prohibit her husband now. How could she do it after they get divorced? That's the question. Elam Ravashi, Ravashi, and I'm based at the top of the table, base explains like this. Elam Ravashi, shiny konomos de chikdushis hagufnami. Konomos are different. Konomos has the power in other words, because when you say something is less like a carbon, is like kedusha sakuf. Kedusha sakuf means um, you make an animal holy to bring it as a carbon, which can only be a short test of rays. You can give wood, you can give a pig, you can give a pig to the base of Middash, uh, for them to sell and buy some wood and stone and gold with it. They could use that. That's all kedusha stomach. But kedusha sakuf is different. You see, the Brian said before that we talked about I'm uh, this field that I mortgaged to you and I'm pod it, I'm being mocked the shit. That being Makdish is Kedusha Stama, not Kedusha Zaguf. Because if it's Kedusha Zaguf, we see now in the Gemara that Kedusha Zaguf is Mafkiya from the Shibud. What does that mean? Ravashi Shanim comes to Kedusha Zaguf Dami. It's like Kedusha Zaguf, and therefore, Ukira Rava Dami Rava Hegdish Chametz Veshikr Mafkiya Midei Shibud. Listen to this. Even though she's a Shibud, she's obligated to give her assets to her husband, and whatever she produces goes to her husband. Not when it comes to konamos, not when it comes to making something like a carbon a netter, because a netter of a carbon, making something like a konam, like a carbon, wow. is the of hegdish. And there's a special rule, Lachlamosh Misinai, that hegdish, chametz v'shechem, mafkim mide shiva. What do we mean by that? If let's say I tell somebody I'm borrowing $10,000 from you, good, and this big bowl that I have over here uh, is the, uh, you know, what you're going to collect from. That's the uh, guarantee, right? Guarantor is this bull. You can find out of the cash, take the bull. Then I makdish the bull. The bull is a shore. Makdish it to bring us a carbon. You know what? The, ha- the hegdish overpowers and supersedes the obligation that I have to give it to you. Even though I wrote it in a star. Yeah, I guarantee it with this bull, but if I make the bull hegdish, that's a special alocha. It belongs to the base of Mishnah, it takes it away. The same thing with chametz. If let's say I tell a guy, this chametz, you'll collect the chametz, I owe you money, you'll collect this chametz. Then Pesach comes along. It's not in the chametz, you didn't give the chametz yet to the guy in his rishos. That's, that's an exclusion. If let's say I still have the chametz, but if I have chametz in my rishos on, on Pesach, what's the halacha? It's worth nothing, it's hefker. I'm right? not enough from it. So that takes away the shiva, you can't collect them anymore. It's worth nothing, you got to destroy it. The same thing with shikhr. I have an Evid Kanani. And I say, okay, listen, I borrowed $10,000. If I can't pay, you can collect, you can take the Evid Kanani. Then I free the Evid Kanani. He's now a freeman. Before he was an Evid. Now he's a free man. Now he's a full Jew. That takes away the Sheba. The guy can't collect anymore. That's the special Achel Moshe Messina. Het Tishchamet Sheshechem Afkimi De Sheba. So sure, she's obligated to give her assets to her husband, right? And, the, and her work product is uh, obligated to her husband. But you know what? Konamus is like Kedusha Sakuf, and Kedusha Sakuf takes away. Before, and I'm about, we were talking about when I redeem, when I get rid of the mortgage, I'm going to make it Kadosh. 
right? Even be Kurdish then. That's not my Kedush's Domin. If it would be Kedush's Aguf, you can make the Kurdish right now. Even though my field is obligated to you, I have a mortgage to you. But if I make it, if it would be Kedush's Aguf, you can't, there's no Kedush's Aguf really on, 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 on a field. But if you would, if there would be Kedush's Aguf there, <laughs> then we take away the Shebu. That's the same thing over here. So the question was, what are we dealing with? How, why did Rabbi Yochum ben say, and Shmuel Paskin like him, that when she out, when she forbids her husband from having any and all from her assets, he has to break it because maybe he'll get divorced. Maybe he'll get divorced or something in the future. Can't, she can't, the net is not chal now. If it's not chal now, how could he break it for the future? So that's how the Ron explained the question. The Ron said, Shmuel um, Zabshel, uh, the low keep in the hash low chal, it's not chal right now. No, come out, how could it be chal later on? The answer is, is it could be chal even right now. Why? Because Hegdish, Hamas, and Shechor takes away the shebud. And when she prohibits him with a conan, with a carbon, <laughs> she's not making himself a nausea. She says, this stuff is also if you like a carbon, that takes away her shebud to her husband. So then you have the obvious question then is what? If so, why do you worry about after they get divorced? She could do it right now. She could do it right now. So that's like, Moshe, Yohaki, Lomali, Shem, Yigur, Shana. What after come on? He has to break the netter because maybe he'll do, divorce her and then the netter will be chal because she's not obligated to him anymore. And then we have this question, well, how can you do it now? If it's not chal now, how can it be chal later on? What do you have to shemigu rishenu? A, a, a netter with a carbon takes away the sheba that she has to her husband right now and should be chal even right now. Says the Gemara, Tani ba'od shemigu rishenu. You're right. Number one, the way we, the way our Gemara reads, and we're going to right away, we're going to show that we show them say other otherwise. It sounds like it says Shem. It's two reasons. Number one, he has to break it right now because her netter has the power to to uh, to uh, to get rid of, right? To destroy, to annul the obligation that she has to give it to us. But and number two, maybe he'll divorce her later on. But uh, you see it in the Bach. Bach reads that it's actually easier to read in Rashi. In the Pirish, they call them the Furish Rashi, um, right before the mission, about on the inside, on the left side, uh, about eight lines from the bottom of Rashi. The Mukwas right now, because it's uh, economist is like Hegdish, and Hegdish has the power to get rid of the obligation. Umashani Almur Rabbanan the Shibuda, the Rabbanan strengthened. The shibud of the husband, the lo asi hegdish mafkilu shibud amine. Meaning what? She has an obligation to her husband. Her husband has this power over her that she's obligated to give his assets. Well, wait a minute, but hegdish takes away the shibud, and kronimus is like hegdish and destroys that. So the answer is that the rabbis strengthen this kiddush, even though yes, hegdish takes away the shibud, but the rabbis strengthen his shibud. Amur ban shibud of the bal, so hegdish doesn't take away the shibud and. Then it's Shem Bigar Shana, the way the Ron looks. Now, now look at the Ron on the right side, the right side, right about there also, before the lines get very wide. He says, Yehochi, the Paka, Shibuda, the Ba, Lomali, Shem Bigar Shana, Mehashta Kadosh, Shem Bigar right now, but Od Shem Bigar Shana, come on. Mehashta Nami Kadosh, the truth is Kadosh right now. Bekonim Afki, Shibude, Bekonim takes away the Shiba, the Ba. If you want to say the Ron puts both girsas together, the reason the Rashi has that girsa and the Bach quotes it also is because that's the reason of the Gemara. The Gemara in Subas says his same similar Gemara, and the Gemara there says that the Rabbanan strengthened his Shibud. So the Ron puts them both together. The truth is, it's Kaddish right now because the Kaddish takes away the Shibud that she has to her husband. The obligation she has to her husband, the Kaddish takes away, like Hegdish. If you want to say, the the Rabbanan strengthened his shibud, the obligation that he she has to give him his uh, her assets. The shavru kolkech gomer like kolkech v'lo kamalva, not like a loan, but rather like like he really owns it. Afilu achi yeh for shivrei shemi gershano. Behind it, the hossam parak afopi and subas parak amura bala shibud imachah vachah lo ikirle. Here the Gemara doesn't see the Ran didn't have the gear so that way, uh, like the like the, like Rashi and the uh, Bach vachah lo ikirle. Here it's not mentioned in the Ran's gear so. It's really the same thing. The Ron, the Ron merges both our Gears and Argomar with the Gears and Subas. If you want to say, if the Rabbana made the, the Shibuda the Baal strengthened it, and it shouldn't be Chal Hashta. So, how do Kushla do the questions go back? Even the Hashlo Chal, the Kameh Chal, the Hashlo Mila, the Kivan, the Medina Chal. The truth is, it's Chal right now. 
it would be how because Hegdish, Hegdish Hamitz and Shechers must be a Beishiva. So she makes a conum, which is like Hegdish, takes away his Shiva, even the, the Medina, where the first of the widest lines in the Ran, Chayo, it's Chal right now because Hegdish takes away his Shiva, and therefore the Neda could be Chal right now and they have to break it. Elo, Elav the Amur Rabbanon Shibud, if it wouldn't be that the Rabbanon strengthened his Shiva, Hegdish would take it away, Midin Torah, because of, because of Hegdish, Hamitz and Shechers. Uh, takes away the shibud minat Torah Allah Hamashu Misinai. So ki almuah also he loved almuah upon the shibud. Ki almuah when they strengthen hanimili the chol hecha the kaima kaime lo lecha wherever it's kaima sechava. Avo misgarsha ki luchayal mi kara dami kiva the bedina roy lachol. In other words, what are we saying? We're saying that the truth is her netus chal right now. Netus chal right now, except because hegdish takes away. The Sheba that she has to give with her husband, that is how right now, and her husband can't ever ask us. Except the Rabbanan said, We're going to strengthen his Sheba, right? He, uh, we're going to strengthen his Sheba. The more of a Sheba made about so uh, um, the strengthen the Sheba so that the net is not really how right now, but it's how later on, meaning that the net is how from right now for all time until she, until, unless she does a Taras Dharm, that is how from right now, but while their lifetime. Or while they're married, the Rabbanan strengthened the Sheba so that it shouldn't be Chal. That's his point. The Yesh Lomar, again, in the first of the wide lines, the Kiva to begin a Chal, it would be Chal right now, or right now. Except Elav Dalmur Rabbanan Shibude. Except the Rabbanan strengthened the Sheba while they're married. So Ki Almur, when they strengthened it, Hani Mur the Chalhecha, the Kaima Kaimei, as long as she is in front of him, meaning she's married to him, Lo Shemi Chal. But once they get married, once they get divorced, it's as if it's how retroactively. So here's how we're answering the question. Shmuel said, and I'm not just over Shalom. How could you be if it, if the netter is not how right now? How could it be how later on after they get divorced 20 years later, 30 years later? How could it be how then? The answer is the truth is the netter is how right now. It's really how right now. Except the Rabbanan said, while you're married, we're going to say you're still obligated to give the stuff in. But once they're divorced, then the netter takes effect. Not that it starts to take effect when when's the divorce. It was really effective from the beginning, except the Rabbanan said, we're, we're suspending that rule. While they're married, we're suspending the rule uh, that uh, that the, the rule that the uh, that her netter would be chal, that the hegdish that she's making it takes away the sheba of the husband. No, we're suspending that as long as they're married. Once they're not married anymore. So now you understand it's not davar because the netter is really chal immediately, except the Rabbanan said, we're going to suspend it as long as they're, as they're married. And, and then as soon as they're not married, we release the suspension. That's the shot in our Gemara. Says the Mishnah. Let's say his wife made an editor and he thought it was his daughter. His daughter was under the age of 12 and a half. No, there's no uh, no fiance right now. Man, a man can divorce. I mean, there's a period in his life when he can break the netter of his wife and his daughter. If he has a daughter up to the age of 12 and a half, from 11 to 12 and a half. So another issue, she made an editor for Savashin and he thought it was his daughter. He heard this, they, they told him your wife made it, and he thought he, he heard his daughter. He didn't hear it too well. Or another beat of a son of the the other way around. Another Benazir, or his wife made a Nazar. She was a Nazarite. The son of become. He thought, no, no, no. He didn't think she was a Nazar. He thought she made a different kind of a Nazar, that she prohibited uh, certain fruits or whatever on her, like you made us like the carbon. Or the vice versa. Another a carbon. She made an Israel of a son of a She thought he made it as a, as a Nazar, that she made herself a Nazar. Or another Betanim. She uh, forbade herself from eating figs. The savor should have been up, and he thought to hear grapes. He didn't hear the word correctly. Or not enough. The savor should have been attained him. I raise the axe In other words, when he heard the netter, he thought it was the wife. It turned out it was the daughter, vice versa. Or he thought she prohibited she made herself a nazira, but he that's what he thought. But it turns out it was a different kind of a netter. Or she prohibited herself from eating grapes, and he thought he heard figs, and he broke the netter. Then afterwards, it turns out no, it wasn't. Figs, it, was, uh, it wasn't grapes, it was figs. It wasn't the Nazira, it was uh, oranges. It wasn't his wife, it was his daughter. You got to break it again. You got to break it again. In other words, the first time that he annulled the netter, that he that he uh, canceled the netter, is ineffective. Ineffective because it was done under a mistake. The clock starts again. The clock starts again. As he made a mistake, right, the clock starts again. Uh, once, once, once he heard it correct, that's, that would be right. He heard about it and made a mistake. Then the clock, once he was clarified to him, then the clock starts again. So the Gemara Lamemra, why is Lamemra the Yosa Dafka? What does the Pasuk say? 
when uh, a husband uh, hears his wife's netter, it says that uh, he can he can break it, right? Um, yeah, it says Rishami Isha, the Hechrish law, he was quiet, then his netter is Makuyim. Im Hafer Yafer, or some Isha, he breaks it, beyond Shemo, right? Or some Isha, beyond Shemo, come as himself. So there it says, it says, Haini uh, Osa, right? In Hechrish law, Haini Osa talks about Haini Osa. Uh, the first part of the Pasik is Beshudara, Isan Rasha, and Biyam Shema Isha Yani Osa. So, so what do we learn from Osa? In other words, Meimra says the Gemara. It's really Tomorrow's Gemara. The Yani Osa Dafka, who Yani Osa, he has to break it, that netter, the netter on that woman, on that particular netter is Dafka. And the Ran says that's for breaking it. Yani Osa means he's for canceling it. What about Kim? So the Ran goes into all the Bichas over here. How do we know that the same thing applies if he confirms it? In other words, it's whether confirming or canceling it. If he confirmed or canceled the wrong neder, right, and the wrong woman, the wrong kind of neder, it's it, whatever he did is ineffective. So you see that from Yeni, Yeni Osa means he breaks it. How do you know the same thing applies to confirming it? So the Ron says, and you can't say, show you command of Shek because that only things that applies to the same thing, but not over here. It's not the same case. Of, uh, uh, based on the Hekish, Lav Lachal Mil Hekish says the Rad, not for everything. You know, Daf from the Mil of the Mishnah, Mihai Kara Gufa. Only things are referring to Moshe. We show you from every Shifrenu. The Mil of Chomrek. There are differences between our Kama Hafer. Remember, Hakam Beliba Hakam, but Hafer Beliba Edom Hafer. You got in order to cancel. You got to say the words. Uh, when it comes to confirming, you can do it in your heart. So it's not exactly the same. It's only for certain things that we say Shikim Mikvan. So he says, therefore, not from even though the Gemara talks about Osa for uh, Hafara. Uh, the Pasuk also says, um, in, in, um, in, in the Gemara says, what was the, the Russian in the, in the Chumash? Uh, in Haini uh, law, right? Uh, law. So just like Osa is talking about Haini Osa breaking it, same thing, Hechrish law also means it, that particular woman, that particular neder. So, so this idea applies to both Hakama and Hafara, whether he's Confirming it or canceling it, it's got to be for that woman, for the correct woman. Frank, the, the, the stipler, that's the stipler, Kilos Yaakov, that was from Chaim Kamievsky, that we all learned about his father, uh, he asked the question, I understand, what do you need a fussy for? Any Osa, law? We all know that if you do something by mistake, it doesn't mean anything. That's what he says. Maishna, we call Tarakula, Shemaisa, Batal, Santa Kun. If you did something by mistake, it doesn't count anything, but Kinyanim made a mistake in a Kenyan, I picked up the wrong item. A fresh is Tumas or Mises, Hektish, if you did a mistake, according to Beis Hill, Hektish Patos is not Hektish. Remember, Beis Shammai says Hektish Patos is, is, is effective. But according to Beis Hill, even if you make something Hektish by mistake, you did the wrong thing, it's not effective. Why do I need a special pasuk over here? So he says, he gives a little bit of a dark answer. He says, speaking about where the husband the, the husband's standing here and he saw his wife and his daughter and he heard them make the netter, but he, he thought he thought was the wrong one. In other words, it's pretty obvious over here that he heard the netter. It's not like he heard about it later on and somebody told him a story and made a mistake, the wife, the daughter. Thing. He heard him make the netter, but he heard it wrong. He, heard, he thought he heard it from the wife, it was from the daughter, or he thought the wife said grapes and she said figs. So he heard it, and you might think in a case like that, if he broke it and confirmed the right thumb at home, that it would be called, Kamash Mullah, no, you're Neo Sub, and, and, and um, a Hechrish law teaches us that it's got to be exact, that if you made any mistake at all, it's not effective. And like you say, this, the clock starts again. All right, we'll pick him here tomorrow. Mitzvah Shem, based on. Have a good day.